Almighty God, merciful Father, I, poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I am
on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joses, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no mighty works there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve, and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, Shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. <coughs> this is the gospel of the Lord.
just by speaking the words, it would have happened. But the Son of God does not choose to perform miracles for the sake of impressing the multitude. He will not preach only what people want to hear, or try to make his teaching appealing, or even relevant to their lives. He is not out to win people to himself by putting on a good show. Rather, he chooses to work in people's lives through the hearing of his word, through the faith which the word itself brings. So preaching the same words he gave the prophet Isaiah, Jesus reveals to those who will listen that he is the one on whom the Spirit rests. He is the one whom the Father himself sent to proclaim liberty to the captives, give sight to the blind, raise the dead, heal the sick, and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Because Jesus himself is the Anointed One, the Messiah of Israel, and the Savior of the nations. Unfortunately, that's not the message the people expected to hear. Be tolerant. Do not judge. Make a difference in the world. God will reward you with a better life because you're basically such nice, hard-working people. That makes sense to our human reason. That we can handle. That we can do. But Christ's preaching that he alone is the only true light, God, Savior, and Redeemer of the world? Well, that's scandalous. To claim that only through faith in him alone comes healing, forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation? That's an offense to the old Adam. It offends our human nature because we always want to play our part. We want an attaboy when we show up for church. We expect some credit from God when we do some good for our neighbor. Because deep down, basically, we think we're pretty good people. Or we just want to be left alone without God messing with us. But he better be there for us when we want him for something, or else we'll take offense. And our Lord marvels at such unbelief in your and my hearts. Because... That's not the way it is with Jesus. He doesn't share his glory. He's the only one who is without sin. And he alone shed his blood to pay for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, he alone can boast before the Father of the good that he has done. That's why the preaching of Christ defended the people of Nazareth then, and it still offends today. After all, they assumed that Jesus was just a man of the family, a mother, an earthly father, brothers and sisters. What authority does he have to tell people how to live, to call people to repentance, to be the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world? Fortunately for us, living in these latter days, Jesus has every power and authority given under heaven to do all these things, even defeat death. Because, as you know, as you have heard and you believe, Jesus is more than just a man. As you confessed, born of the Virgin Mary and begotten of the Father from all eternity, he is God in the flesh. The word he speaks is the truth. For in him, and through him, all the scriptures are fulfilled. And yet, crazy as it sounds, despite his divine power and authority, Jesus chooses to work for you through means. Through the spoken word. <clears throat> through the words of the prophets and the apostles. Even through the words of the disciples who are sent out to carry the preaching of Christ to all the nations and all those who will listen down to this day. Just as the Lord called and sent Ezekiel, no true prophet and no true apostle will ever take it upon themselves to preach their own message. For they have no authority to do so. And neither do I. 
Only the word of God taught by Christ and given to the apostles and the, the prophets before them carries the authority of Christ himself, bringing with it the power to call us to repentance, to heal the sin-sick heart, to drive out the power of the devil, and even raise those who are dead in their trespasses to new life in Christ. Unfortunately, even we can be just like the people of Israel when we reject or ignore what Jesus and the prophets preach. Not knowing the word of God, even the baptized can become content with the Jesus we think we know and offended when the Holy Spirit reveals just how really ignorant we are. And obviously this can be very painful. So many would rather just stay away from Christ and his church. Ignorance is bliss, but ignorance does not save. Because in our weak flesh, we don't like to hear or learn the word of God. Especially when it shows us our sins, calls us to repentance, and topples those false gods we erect for ourselves in our lives. C.F.W. Walther, first president of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, described this in his second evening lecture on the distinction of law and gospel when he said, a person may pretend to be a Christian, though in reality he is not. As long as he is in this condition, he is quite content with the knowledge that of the mere outlines of Christian doctrine. Everything he's beyond that, he says, is for pastors and theologians. To understand as clearly as possible everything that God has revealed, all of that is irrelevant for non-Christians. Did you hear what Walter was saying? He's saying that we're only playing to be Christians if we are not interested in learning God's word and the doctrines that that word reveals. You're not truly being a Christian if you are content to keep God's word at arm's length. You see, Jesus has always chosen to do his mighty works of healing and forgiving, where the Holy Spirit has worked faith in people who hear his words and believe them. That's how God's grace works, and that's how we are justified, declared righteous and made holy through the word alone. But where there is no faith, where the Holy Spirit has been driven out, the Lord cannot work. Because the life and the forgiveness and the healing that he would give through his word and sacraments has been rejected. That's why, according to St. Mark, he could do no mighty works in Nazareth. Not because Jesus was weak or uncaring, but because of the people's stiff-necked unbelief and their refusal to listen. That's how it was in Nazareth. As we know all too well, that's how it is still today. When Jesus speaks to us through his word, there are still those who in their stubborn unbelief choose to reject what Jesus is saying, even though it's right before their very eyes. Because we know all too well in our own weak flesh, it's still easy to want to live our own way, believe what we want, rather than cling to what Christ himself teaches. But those who go off like wandering sheep, each to their own way, they risk rejecting God's spiritual healing and even eternal life itself. Just remember God's words to the Son of Man, the prophet Ezekiel. He said, I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet is born among them. How do we know when we have heard the words of the prophet? When you hear the true preaching, preaching of Christ and him crucified. The promised Son of Man, Jesus, is acting himself as a prophet and an apostle through his own preaching. Because Jesus alone is the perfect Son of Man, who was called by his Father, and who was sent from the Father to go to a stubborn and stiff-necked, sinful people like us to preach the good news of salvation. What a blessed thing. You have heard this good news today. And every time you come to this place to gather in his name. Therefore, 
we too must repent if we have been stubborn in our resistance to God's holy word. We too must repent if we have been ignoring Christ, living in a way contrary to his holy word and ten commandments. But thankfully, Jesus told his apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, for when I am weak, I am strong. When we are honest about who we are before God, when we say, poor, miserable sinner, we're doing exactly what Paul said. We're not boasting in ourselves, but rejoicing in the fact that in our weaknesses, Christ has forgiven us. <coughs> Believing what Jesus has revealed to us through his word, we can declare, just look at what my Lord has done for this world. He hung upon the cross for all to see and take faith in and rejoice in. He's the one. He's the one who paid for my sins to redeem my worthless eyes from a well-deserved death in hell. For he's the one who has taken each one of my little white lies, each one of my snotty little remarks about friends, co-workers, spouses, or children, each one of my lazy days when I did not bother to crack open my Bible or pray, each time I have sat down to eat without thanking the Lord, he has taken each one of my wicked and perverse thoughts and deeds, and he has healed me eternally. Because by his stripes we are healed. And that forgiveness comes through faith alone. And that's why the Lord has come. That's why he sent out the faithful to preach the good news. This is also why he has left us with the sacraments forgive our sins and comfort us in our affliction and weak faith. Because we cannot save ourselves and because we do not go to Him on our own, He comes to us. People still need to be called to repentance and pointed back to the only Savior this world has ever known. Pointed to the only Savior who loves them so much that He chooses to die for you. Directed to the only Savior who despite how things might look in our lives, has sent the weak and the foolish and yes, even the sinful to take this message of hope to you, to bring you the promise of salvation, a people who often do not realize how much you need it, to bring the hope of eternal life to those who are dying and do not know it, to bring the love of God to people who know they need something but do not know where to look. And that's why we point them to that, the font, and to that, the altar, and to that, the word. That's where faith comes from. That's where sin is forgiven and forgiveness handed out. That's why we're constantly trying to turn people away from themselves and to the gifts of God, which rescues from sin and death and the power of the devil. You see, like the people of Israel, like the people of Nazareth, we too often think we have it all sorted out on our own. But we know enough about this Jesus. We're content to listen to Jesus one hour a week or a couple of hours a month. But deep down, we're confronted with death, sickness, suffering, and calamity. We also know how truly weak and what our great need is. And that's why we find our help and strength in Christ alone found in such foolish and often despised things as the waters of holy baptism, received in the most wonderful and mysterious gift of holy communion, that meal in which he gives us his body and blood to eat and to drink, and yes, even found in the much misunderstood but powerful office of the keys, wielded in confession and absolution. After all, the only message we have is God's all too often stubborn people it's the same message which has always been preached and which alone can save. Nothing less than preaching in Christ and being crucified, which shows us poor, miserable, weak people just how much our Lord loves us and what he has done for us, so that we might boast in him and of his great works of saving. Because it is in our Lord's speaking that the Holy Spirit has come to you, just as it did to Ezekiel and to the apostles and the people of Nazareth, because in the word of God, faith, forgiveness, and healing is brought to you by Christ himself. Not hindered, not rejected, but heard and believed. Our Lord is 
is working his miracles among us this day because he has brought his stubborn people to faith. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You have been watching the Divine Service at Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Carlisle, Iowa. Join us this coming Sunday at the Divine Service, which begins at 9 a.m. Our Divine Service is followed by Adult Bible Study and Sunday School at 10.30. You're also invited to join us for Vespers and catechesis for the entire family on Wednesday evenings beginning at 6.30 p.m. We also gather for the morning prayer service of Matins on Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Holy Cross is a member of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and is located at 1100 Market Street, Carlisle, Iowa.